everybody, I'm Dan from Slice Engineering. I'm here with Alan, the owner and founder of Repcord. So this is your this is your spot. This is where the magic happens. Yeah, it's actually it's one of them. Repcord is still very much a garage based company. Mm -hmm. You know, we got our start in the garage, and uh, you know, God willing, maybe 2020 will be our year. We're we're right on that cusp of being ready to. We, well, we we need to. We're right. starting to outgrow and stuff. But this is uh, just kind of a little annex, uh, if you will, of what what we do for for production. Um, a lot of what we do is uh, laser cutting as well as 3D printing. So, Alan, tell me about. Uh, what does Repcord do? What, what do you guys do right yeah, now? Yeah, so um, I'm in the 3D printing space, but I sell basically 3D printing uh, accessories. Uh, and our flagship product right now is the Rep Box. So it's a filament storage solution uh, or filament management solution, mm -hmm. if you want fancy terminology and stuff. Right. So we produce that, uh, but I also have like nozzle cleaning kits, filament, um, you know, the, the things that you would need to be a successful 3D printer. I think the, the way I first heard of you guys was from your little nozzle and hot end cleaning yeah. kit. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know who you were actually until uh, before that, but somebody was like, oh, have you tried these these rep, rep cord rep cleaning, cord cleaning yeah. things? Yeah, and I was like, right there, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so I was like, no, not yet. And then we got some and I was like, oh, this is great. So um, yeah, then we started recommending them to people and I met you at New York Maker Fair yeah. last year and I was like, oh, this is the guy. Yeah, no, that was an interesting product. It was just something that I, you know, like many people just mm -hmm. felt I needed a better solution for right. cleaning out a clogged nozzle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people had recommended, oh, you can get some, you know, fine gauge guitar string or mm -hmm. piano wire or whatever else. And I'm like, nah, you know, there's got to be a better way. And uh, and so I basically just got in touch with a couple different companies and, mm -hmm. and said, here's what I want and mm -hmm. found a company to make it for me. And Sweet. that was kind of our first our first big hit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the, about the rep box. So that's like your yeah. flagship product now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, rep box again was something out of necessity. I, I have a lot of filament, uh, mm -hmm. as you can and see. So uh, my buddy uh, Travis, known as Apyro Design, to a lot of people, uh, uh, and I got together, and you know, he's got a bunch of filament too. And we're like, you know, it'd be nice if there was something to clean this up a bit. So mm -hmm. it started kind of as an organizational tool, Thing, right? For tool. you guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, we didn't really. Um, I think it was gonna be nearly as big as it was. Uh, so just kind of a nicer cabinet, if you mm -hmm. will. And obviously people wanna, you know, control the environment around their filament, and keep dust off of it, and mm -hmm. mount it on the wall, make it right. look nice and stuff like that. And and from there, it, it evolved into a much more robust system. I would say we have kind of an ecosystem now where we have components for the rep box, mm -hmm. rewinder systems, mounting systems, um, you know, different different uh, configurations for rollers inside of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was really designed to be as versatile as possible. Right. And uh, we're seeing more and more people wanting to do exotics and stuff. And mm -hmm. so we're working now more on, on temperature control and humidity control. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the next, there'll be some interesting stuff coming up next year. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. cool. So. so how did you get started in all this? I know your background is not in 3D printing at all. No, it's yeah. it's not. You know, I think like a lot of people out there, like I, you know, kind of took it on as a fun hobby. I'm a maker at heart. I've always been tinkerer in the garage kind of mm -hmm. guy. And, um, um, you know, got my first 3D printer and fell in love with it. And I, I just wanted to print all the things. Right. You know, download everything on Thingiverse and print one yeah. of each. <laughs> uh, and uh, but I was a web developer before this, uh, and I was um, doing a lot of uh, e-commerce integrations with Amazon. And uh, I saw that a lot of my clients were making pretty good money mm. selling stuff on Amazon, and I was kind of ready for a change or wanting kind of to diversify a little bit. And so I kind of started Repcord as a, a side hustle. Gotcha. Uh, and then it wasn't until about almost two years ago now that we like actually started doing our own manufacturing with Repbox and that's been a just a sea change for us in mm -hmm. terms of um, you know going from like kind of a 
just an online reseller of sorts to like right. an actual manufacturer fabricator mm -hmm. and stuff and that has been a learning curve yeah it's a whole set of different least. challenges oh, right man yeah. yeah and you know i'm a one-man wolf pack and so uh -huh. i gotta wear all the hats right um and uh but you know 3d printing enables me to do stuff that you know somebody 10 years ago I think wouldn't have been able to do. Mm -hmm. So what are you using 3D printing for specifically? So our, our biggest use is uh, printing parts for our rep box. Okay. Um, but we've got other products now that we sell that are kind of companion add-on products. Mm -hmm. So like there's the rewinder set. But uh, from a production standpoint, uh, 3D printing is absolutely critical because there's actually some designs in uh, both rep box and our rewinder system that can only be made via additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. They're not something that can be injection molded which some might argue is potentially a weakness if that, you know, we we can't really ramp up production. Maybe we'll have to redesign some stuff. But to me, it was kind of an homage to the to the space. Right. And I said like, well, if I'm gonna 3D print this, like why not stretch the design to mm -hmm. take advantage? So I think your your rewinder is a pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that was such a fun yeah, uh, project. And it's, of that. It's, it's one of those things that you, you know, you think about it and fundamentally it's just you thinking, okay, we'll put a spring inside of a filament, roll of filament and then it'll wind back on itself. Mm -hmm. And it just needs a clutch mechanism so that it doesn't just break the spring mm -hmm. from, from over rolling. But um, there's, there's a good amount of complexity to that yeah. design uh, that I got into to, again, I'm all about modular design and versatility. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to accommodate, as you well know, there's no standard for filament right. school sizes. Yeah. Uh, and to this day, every every day I get an email from somebody saying like, can I use it with this spool? Like mm -hmm. spools of filament I've never even heard of and brands right. I've never heard of. Um, Which but, is amazing considering, I mean, how well integrated we are in the space that still there's stuff we don't know about. Well, there's, it's, there's it's new amazing. brands popping up every day. Sure, yeah. And, um, but anyway, they, uh, so it was important to me to try to make the product as accessible to as many mm -hmm. people as possible. And what's interesting was as I was designing it, uh, it, it actually evolved like as I was iterating, which is the, the best part about 3D printing and, and just garage manufacturing and stuff mm -hmm. like that, the fail fast generation, right. is that, that what you initially maybe sketch out and go like will oftentimes evolve into something completely different, which right. is kind of what happened with Repbox too. You know, we mm -hmm. didn't really expect uh, the, the multi-material revolution that's upon us with multi-color printing and stuff right. like that to really drive our sales as much as they have. Tell me about how you're using the Mosquito to uh, to change your process. I, I, I always like to start by telling like, there's a huge difference in our space of making one of something and making 10,000 of something. Right. Uh, and so a lot of the times like, in, in our maker space, like we, there are so many talented people that design amazingly intricate things that are really cool and really functional and stuff like that, but would never make it as a product mm -hmm. because they're just way too complicated, right? Right. Uh, and, and, or they, they're, the parts that they're making for it are just like, they would take forever to print or whatever mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so there's a lot of considerations when you're designing for way more than just aesthetic and functionality when you get into design for manufacturer mm -hmm. uh, you really start looking at your design from the standpoint of how can i make these as quickly and efficiently as possible right and that's absolutely where mosquito comes in because uh as you guys advertise for the size of hot end uh, the speed that you can print i, I run magnums ex mm -hmm. exclusively um you know, you advertise like 20% faster. Right. When you're in the business of producing stuff, that's a really compelling reason. If I can print 20% faster, mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, my production rate increases by 20%. Right. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't take very long to pay off the premium right. uh, of that. And I can say uh, wholeheartedly that that thing can fly right. on a properly tuned machine. Right. Um, and you know, we're still very much a garage based company. We're scrappy. We don't have a lot of funds. And so um, I'm a tinkerer. And to me, my, the route I decided to go down was uh, find a bunch of affordable printers and upgrade them uh, to become like premium mm -hmm. production machines. Right. And uh, the Mosquito has been uh, an important component of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so that it, 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 I, I think I was telling you this the other day, it, it makes me push the boundaries of what's possible 
because I want to see what right. it can <laughs> it can do. Uh, and I've I've encountered the limitations of the mechanics of the printer far mm -hmm. sooner than the limitations of the hot end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's uh, awesome. So yeah, <laughs> we like to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you for sitting down with us today. This has been a, a really cool conversation. It's cool to see what you guys are doing, and yeah, and uh, I'm excited to see what is in the future for for Repbox. Yeah, for it's Repcord. it's. Uh, I'm excited too, and it's been an awesome process. And thanks for making such an awesome product. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right.